All right, welcome back to another action-packed fiddlehead fiddle lesson. Today we're gonna do something called the triad. This is a pretty useful thing. Um, well, it pops up in a lot of tunes, so if you kind of get triads down, make it easier for you to more easily learn tunes and songs. Second thing it's good for is uh, eventually if we do chords, if you want to play chords so you can back people up, which I'll do lessons on, this will lay the foundation for that. So having the triad down and a little understanding of what it is will make it much easier for you to um, find chords when playing with other people. And, and chords are a way, in case you haven't heard that term, they're a way for you to back up another instrument. So you don't always have to be soloing or playing the lead. The fiddle can do other useful things. Um, and so we'll get to that in later lessons. Third thing triads are good for, I think, is improvising. If you ever get to that state where your stage where you want to improvise or jam with people, having this along with multiple scales will give you kind of tools and ideas to work with. So let's jump into this. Let's try it out. Sorry about that bad joke, but actually I meant to tell it, so maybe I shouldn't say sorry. But sorry because it's so bad. But I'll say it again. Let's try it out, okay? Let's try, sorry, can't, I'll stop. Um, okay, take a breath. Sometimes bad jokes just don't leave you alone. It's, it's like they like a virus in your brain. Um, okay, triad. So let's start with the G major triad, okay? And we're gonna start by playing the regular major scale. It's a G major scale, one octave. If you don't at least know the major scales, I suggest you pause or stop this and go learn those. I have videos for those that up because it's sort of a, a first step for before getting a triad, I think. Okay, so then within the G major scale, if you're a math nerd like I used to be, um, then you would say that the triad is a subset of the major scale. If math scares you, don't worry. Um, it just means that um, it's contained within the scale. So there's a major scale. The triad is just the first note of the scale, the third note of the scale, and the fifth note of the scale. So here's, again, it's on G, it'd be open G, second finger on G, and open D. That is a G major triad. Do it up and down. Let's cycle that together a few times. One, two, three. Again, that's a G major triad. If you do the same fingering, but start on D, then you have a D major triad. You don't have to go up and down either. You could just go up. Just as a practice idea, or you could go just down. That's actually really good practice to go backwards. Um, a further thing you could do with this is to start to add patterns. So you could add double notes. You could add rhythms like hoedown. All right, so we have G major triad starting on G, D major triad starting on D, and if we start on open A, guess what? That's an A major triad. Open A, second on A, open E. All right, 
So far, so good. Let's see, um, if you know, uh, well, let's play your third finger on G. Okay, that's a C. And so if we start there and go D1 and D3, we have a C major triad. So I'm gonna do one more and then we'll take a little break. Oh, here's a C major triad. Okay, and then one more we'll do. If you know low two, then we can do the F major triad, starting on D. So low two on D is F, then open A, and low two. That's an F major triad. Okay. Should should back up and say that and play the relevant scales for these other, these last two ones. So the F major scale, if you don't know it. So we have one, two, which is not in the triad, three, which is in the triad, four, not in the triad, and five. One, three, five. One, three, five is the rule, okay? So let's see, let's go back to the first one we did, G major triad. Okay. And now let's play the C major triad, which we did um, just a minute ago. And so what I'm gonna do now, that'll be kind of fun, is we'll go back and forth between G and C a little bit. And that will, that's basically a chord progression you're playing. We're not doing, we're not, we're not exactly playing chords, we're playing something called, the, the fancy music term for it is arpeggios. Um, but let's just do it, enough talk. So there we went from G to C. So if we were to, you could actually use this to back somebody up. G. That was G to C. Now let's see. If we do that starting on open D. Well, there we're going from D to the key of G. We haven't talked about the, the upper octave triad of G. We'll do talk about it in a sec. Let's just, while it's still fresh in your fingers, let's just play it some D to G. Now G. Back to D. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. I'm doing my best to speak clearly and present this clearly. Um, so we did this for a G triad. So, basically that's based on the next octave of the G scale. There's that, that's the upper octave of the G scale. I got videos for the G major scale and the two octave G major scale, which will be linked below. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, or one, three, Notice that this triad G is the same as the triad C, same fingering. We just start the C one on the G string. So there's C, and then we start it on the D string, we have a G major triad. C major triad. G major triad. If we start the same pattern on the A string, third finger, same finger pattern, we have an A major triad. So 
Sorry, I was wrong. D major triad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's a D major triad. All right. And so let's back up. Um, let's try to put it all together a little bit more. Um, let's go back to the very first thing we did, the G major triad starting on open G. Okay. If, you, if you're familiar with note names, that's G, B, D. And now we're gonna do the next octave up of that. So starting on third finger on D, first on A, third on A. That's the upper octave of the G major triad. Lots of words. Um, okay, and that's G, B, D again, just like G, B, D, G, B, D. All right, so if we put those together, we have a two octave version of the triad. Let's go backwards. Let's do this G major triad, two octaves, up and down a few times. And now without thinking about it too much, let's do the exact same fingering, but start on open D, and then we'll have a two octave version of the D major triad. So here we go. So um, let's take a, a, a moment and kind of like put some perspective on this. So again, what is this good for? All, I always like to try to make these kind of theoretical things connected to actual music you play. And so um, I teach a tune called Tobin's Jig. So I'll put a link to, but Tobin's Jig is full of triads. Um, so the jig goes. So the first three notes are D major triad. Actually, the first four notes, because we go D, F sharp, A. All right, I'm not gonna teach it to you now, but these four, first four notes of it, if you know it, are part of the triad. All right, so, um, and then let's go through the tune a little bit. It, it, I'm just kind of illustrating how it's, this tune is connected to triads. The next bit of the tune is. Now those three notes are an A major triad. We're just starting at the top or at the fifth of the. All right, so that's an A major triad. D major, A major. And so guess what? If we start the tune, the guitar, or piano, or recording or whatever, the chord instrument would be playing D major. Switch to A major. Da, 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 da. All right. So basically, in this tune, you're really outlining the chord strongly. That does isn't always the case. Um, so sort of this lesson is sort of a mishmash of theory and practice, and I'm hoping it makes sense. Feel free to ask me a question in the comments field or whatever, and I'll I'll do my best to answer it. Most of my theory knowledge is pretty simple and based on just what I can use. It's just like functional theory. So um, anyhow, so what's another tune we could do? Um, I also teach a tune called Burdicchia Recosid, a klezmer tune. So the first four notes of that are D major triad. There's another famous tune called the Shokin Farewell.
And so that little run I did just there is a D major triad as well. So this part is obvious. That's just the most basic D major triad on the violin. And then we do. So the beginning of the next one. And then we start on an open A, which is also in the triad. All those notes are purely in the triad. Okay, so let's move on. We've done the G two octave, the D two octave. Um, you could also do an A two octave. So we, our A was starting on an open A. We have so we could do a lower octave of the A triad by going first on G, raised third on G, and first on D. If you don't know raised third yet, um, I would first learn that before trying this. I'll put a link to that video below too. If you're more comfortable, you could use lowered fourth. And then we string that together with the upper octave. Again. We also did the C major triad. All right. Now if we do and do, let's see, and we did the F major triad. So if we do this pattern that we did for F, but we start it, instead of on D, we start it on A. It's low two on A, open E, low two on E. Then that up here is a C major triad, the upper octave. All right. Now let's string that together with the lower octave C major to make a two octave C major triad. Again, C major. Okay. Um, last thing I'm gonna give you is uh, minor triads. So, um, if, if what's come before in this lesson is confusing, I would stop, rewind, and just, even if you don't get this stuff, if you just play it, that's the most important thing. I wish I would have said that right at the beginning of the video. The, the most important thing is to just play these things, all right? So, it'll make sense eventually, and if it doesn't, it doesn't even matter. The main thing is to just play it, get them in your ear. Okay, so a minor triad is the same thing. It's one, the first, third, and fifth notes, but of a minor scale. So say we're doing D Dorian, which is. All right. Um, the uh, minor scale would be, or the, sorry, the mi D minor triad would be open, low to A. That's the first, fifth, and sorry, first, third, and fifth note of the D Dorian scale, D minor triad. All right. If we do an E Dorian, then the first, third, and fifth of that scale is one on D, three on D, one on A. And in fact, there's a tune which uses these triads a lot, and it uses E minor triad and D major triad a lot. This tune is called Swallowtail Jig. I'll play a little bit of it and put a link in the comments field below. So Swallowtail Jig is... So the first little riff, is nothing more than E minor 
triad. All right. The next riff is nothing but D major triad. So here's the the first riff. That's based on E minor triad. And then the next riff is based on D major triad. All right? So you don't need to know that, but it sure is cool, right? If you can kind of see the connection with all this, all with the triads and how they pop up. Or maybe it's just cool to me because I'm a total nerd. Um, anyway, I think that's about it for this lesson. I feel like uh, I talked a little too much. I hope it's not too confusing. And the take home message, just play these things. I should have said that in the beginning. Um, just play them a ton and ask me questions and it'll all make sense. Okay, have fun. Talk to you soon. Thanks for Excellent.